November 2nd, Commemoration of All Souls. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Keep in mind that Jesus Christ has died for us and is risen from the dead. He is our saving Lord. He is joy for all ages. If we die with the Lord, we shall live with the Lord. Keep in mind that Jesus Christ has died for us and is risen from the dead. He is our saving Lord. He is joy for all ages. If we endure with the Lord, we shall reign with the Lord. Keep in mind that Jesus Christ has died for us and is risen from the dead. He is our saving Lord. He is joy for all ages. In him all our sorrow, in him all our joy. Keep in mind that Jesus Christ has died for us and is risen from the dead. He is our saving Lord. He is joy for all ages. In him hope of glory, in him all our love. Keep in mind that Jesus Christ has died for us and is risen from the dead. He is our saving Lord. He is joy for all ages. In him our redemption, in him all our grace. Keep in mind that Jesus Christ has died for us and is risen from the dead. He is our saving Lord. He is joy for all ages. In him our salvation, in him all our peace. Keep in mind that Jesus Christ has died for us and is risen from the dead. He is our saving Lord. He is joy for all ages. From the earth you formed me, with flesh you clothed me. Lord, my Redeemer, raise me up again at the last day. I waited, I waited for the Lord, and he stooped down to me. He heard my cry. He drew me from the deadly pit, from the miry clay. He set my feet upon a rock and made my footsteps firm. He put a new song into my mouth, praise of our God. Many shall see and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Happy the man who has placed his trust in the Lord and has not gone over to the rebels who follow false gods. How many, O Lord my God, are the wonders and designs that you have worked for us? You have no equal. Should I proclaim and speak of them, they are more than I can tell. You do not ask for sacrifice and offerings, but an open ear. You do not ask for holocaust and victim. Instead, here am I. In the scroll of the book it stands written that I should do your will. My God, I delight in your law, in the depth of my heart. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. From the earth you formed me, with flesh you clothed me. Lord, my Redeemer, raise me up again at the last day. Lord, may it please you to rescue me, look upon me, and help me. Your justice I have proclaimed in the great assembly. My lips I have not sealed. You know it, O Lord. I have not hidden your justice in my heart, but declared your faithful help. I have not hidden your love and your truth from the great assembly. O Lord, you will not withhold your compassion from me. Your merciful love and your truth will always guard me. For I am beset with evils too many to be counted. My sins have fallen upon me, and my sight fails me. They are more than the hairs of my head, and my heart sinks. O Lord, come to my rescue. Lord, come to my aid. O let there be rejoicing and gladness for all who seek you. Let them ever say, The Lord is great, who love your saving help. As for me, wretched and poor, the Lord thinks of me. You are my rescuer, my help. O God, do not delay. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, may it please you to rescue me, look upon me, and help me. My soul is thirsting for the living God. When shall I see him face to face? Like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul is yearning for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for God, the God of my life. When can I enter and see the face of God? My tears have become my bread, by night, by day. As I hear it said all the day long, where is your God? These things will I remember as I pour out my soul. How I would lead the rejoicing crowd into the house of God, amid cries of gladness and thanksgiving, the throng wild with joy. Why are you cast down, my soul? 
why groan within me? Hope in God, I will praise him still, my Savior and my God. My soul is cast down within me as I think of you, for the country of Jordan and Mount Hermon, from the hill of Mizar. Deep is calling on deep, in the roar of waters. Your torrents and all your waves swept over me. By day the Lord will send his loving kindness. By night I will sing to him, praise the God of my life. I will say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning oppressed by the foe? With cries that pierce me to the heart, my enemies revile me, saying to me all the day long, Where is your God? Why are you cast down, my soul? Why groan within me? Hope in God, I will praise him still, my Savior and my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My soul is thirsting for the living God. When shall I see him face to face? Lord, countless are your mercies. Give me life according to your word. A reading from the first letter of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians. Tell me, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how is it that some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, Christ himself has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is void of content, and your faith is empty too. Indeed, we should then be exposed as false witnesses of God, for we have borne witness before him that raised up Christ. But he certainly did not raise him up if the dead are not raised. Why? Because if the dead are not raised, then Christ was not raised. And if Christ was not raised, your faith is worthless. You are still in your sins, and those who have fallen asleep in Christ are the deadest of the dead. If our hopes in Christ are limited to this life only, we are the most pitiable of men. But as it is, Christ is now raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death came through a man, hence the resurrection of the dead comes through a man also. Just as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will come to life again, but each one in proper order. Christ the firstfruits, and then, at his coming, all those who belong to him. After that will come the end, when, after having destroyed every sovereignty, authority, and power, he will hand over the kingdom to God the Father. Christ must reign until God has put all enemies under his feet, and the last enemy to be destroyed is death. Scripture reads that God has placed all things under his feet, but when it says that everything has been made subject, it is clear that he who has made everything subject to Christ is excluded. When finally all has been subjected to the Son, he will then subject himself to the one who made all things subject to him, so that God may be all in all. If the dead are not raised, what about those who have themselves baptized on behalf of the dead? If the raising of the dead is not a reality, why be baptized on their behalf? And why are we continually putting ourselves in danger? I swear to you, brothers, by the very pride you take in me, which I cherish in Christ Jesus our Lord, that I face death every day. If I fought those beasts at Ephesus for purely human motives, what profit was there for me? If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be led astray any longer. Bad company corrupts good morals. Return to reason, as you ought, and stop sinning. Some of you are quite ignorant of God. I say it to your shame. Christ must reign until God has brought all enemies under his feet, and the last enemy to be destroyed is death. Then death and Sheol will give up their dead. Death and Sheol will be cast into the fiery lake, and the last enemy to be destroyed is death. A reading from a book on the death of his brother Satyrus by St. Ambrose, Bishop. We see that death is gain, life is loss. Paul says, For me life is Christ and death a gain. What does Christ mean but to die in the body and receive the breath of life? Let us then die with Christ to live with Christ. We should have a daily familiarity with death, a daily desire for death, by this kind of detachment our soul must learn to free itself from the desires of the body. It must soar above earthly lusts to a place where they cannot come near, 
to hold it fast. I must take on the likeness of death to avoid the punishment of death. The law of our fallen nature is at war with the law of our reason and subjects the law of reason to the law of error. What is the remedy? Who will set me free from this dead body? The grace of God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. We have a doctor to heal us. Let us use the remedy he prescribes. The remedy is the grace of Christ, the dead body our own. Let us then be exiles from our body, so as not to be exiles from Christ. Though we are still in the body, let us not give ourselves to the things of the body. We must not reject the natural rights of the body, but we must desire before all else the gifts of grace. What more need be said? It was by the death of one man that the world was redeemed. Christ did not need to die if he did not want to, but he did not look on death as something to be despised, something to be avoided, and he could have found no better means to save us than by dying. Thus his death is life for all. We are sealed with the sign of his death. When we pray, we preach his death. When we offer sacrifice, we proclaim his death. His death is victory, his death a sacred sign. Each year his death is celebrated with solemnity by the whole world. What more should we say about his death, since we use this divine example to prove that it was death alone that won freedom from death, and death itself was its own redeemer? Death is then no cause for mourning, for it is the cause of mankind's salvation. Death is not something to be avoided, for the Son of God did not think it beneath his dignity, nor did he seek to escape it. Death was not part of nature, it became part of nature. God did not decree death from the beginning. He prescribed it as a remedy. Human life was condemned because of sin to unremitting labor and unbearable sorrow, and and so began to experience the burden of wretchedness. There had to be a limit to its evils. Death had to restore what life had forfeited. Without the assistance of grace, immortality is more of a burden than a blessing. The soul has to turn away from the aimless paths of this life, from the defilement of an earthly body, it must reach out to those assemblies in heaven, though it is given only to the saints to be admitted to them, to sing the praises of God. We learn from Scripture how God's praise is sung to the music of the harp. Great and wonderful are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the nations. Who will not revere and glorify your nature? You alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you. The soul must also desire to witness your nuptials, Jesus, and to see your bride escorted from earthly to heavenly realities. As all rejoice and sing, all flesh will come before you. No longer will the bride be held in subjection to this passing world, but will be made one with the Spirit. Above all else, Holy David prayed that he might see and gaze on this. One thing I have asked of the Lord, this I shall pray for to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and to see how gracious is the Lord. There are some who have died a godly death. They shall receive the splendid reward which awaits them. Then the just will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. They shall receive the splendid reward which awaits them. Let us pray. Merciful Father, hear our prayers and console us. As we renew our faith in your Son, whom you raised from the dead, Strengthen our hope that all our departed brothers and sisters will share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord and give him thanks. 